Anti-French sentiments have surged in the Sahel region lately, evident through actions taken by countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, and most recently Niger. These nations' military forces have assumed control and sacked French military units. Burkina Faso shut down French television stations, and Mali has even replaced French as its official language. One interesting thing about this trend is the overwhelming support military juntas have received from people in their countries. The people from these former French colonies have accused France of exploitation and interference in their countries. A central aspect of this discourse revolves around the historical backdrop of French dominance and colonization. In this video, we will look at the history of the relationship between Africa and France and what has led to the erosion of their relationship. Welcome to Africa Info Hub, an educational channel dedicated to presenting Africa to the world through a renewed perspective on its rich history. Our mission is to shed light on the diverse and fascinating narratives that have shaped the continent. To ensure that you never miss out on our exceptional content, we kindly encourage you to subscribe. France started getting interested in Africa in the 16th century. Like other colonial powers, France was also actively involved in slavery. In fact, France ranked as the third largest participant in the slave trade. It is believed that roughly 1.3 million Africans were transported to the American colonies, yet tragically. Nearly 200,000 lives were lost at sea during these journeys. As the institution of slavery evolved, France sought out ports to facilitate its operations. In 1659, they established a port in Saint Louis, Senegal. For a considerable period, French involvement predominantly encompassed the coastal regions of Africa, leaving the inland areas untouched. Slavery at that time was very beneficial, hence, more colonial powers increased their efforts to expand. This led to contention among them as they were all trying to take as much as they can from the continent. The French expansion embarked from Senegal in 1854, led by General Louis Fadeherb, who assumed the role of governor. Swiftly immersing himself in his responsibilities, he expanded French influence to encompass Gambia. However, his aspirations extended further, he sought dominion over the Niger Delta and Mali. Despite his ambitions, his government exhibited reservations, citing concerns over the financial burden. Consequently, the expansion initiative experienced a hiatus, only to be revived in the 1880s, marking the commencement of the renowned scramble for Africa. This inevitably sparked conflicts among European powers, as they engaged in a competitive race to acquire various territories, progressively dismantling nations, one after another. Subsequently, the German Chancellor formulated a proposition. He gathered all European nations in Berlin in 1885 and led them in the signing of the Berlin Act, which served to formalize what is now known as the Scramble for Africa. The underlying logic behind this approach was straightforward. Instead of engaging in conflicts amongst themselves, the European powers chose to divide and apportion the continent. Each nation just would take a territory. It was like Africa was a delicious cake and everyone could have a piece. There was no regard for the people of the continent and these colonial countries saw Africa as a means to power and wealth. As the 1880s unfolded, nearly 80% of the African continent was under the rule of local leaders, including kings, sultans, and tribal chiefs. However, by the turn of the century in 1900, this landscape had undergone a stark reversal. Approximately 90% of Africa had fallen under European colonial domination. In 1899, Captain Paul Voulet accompanied by his second-in-command, Lieutenant Julian Chernoyne, both famously known for their propensity for violence tasks, was to explore and map the Niger region, gather local intelligence, and reach Sudan before returning. Their objective was to establish a contiguous ribbon of French territory extending from Senegal in the west to Sudan in the east. Captain Voulet had earned a reputation through his previous endeavors 
including leading the French conquest of Burkina Faso in 1896. Driven by ambition and employing brutal tactics, his expedition to Sudan is known by various names such as the Killer Trail, the African Apocalypse, and the Heart of Darkness, which provide a glimpse into the harrowing events that unfolded. This expedition stands as one of the most violent and blood-soaked episodes in colonial history, not just within Africa, but across the global context. Unfortunately, Voulet's mission was not adequately funded. Consequently, upon reaching the initial village, he demanded porters to assist with carrying supplies. When the local inhabitants refused, he resorted to extreme measures, butchering the entire village, resulting in the deaths of around 100 people. Voulet frequently denied provisions to his camp followers. Responding to their complaints, he resorted to lethal measures, systematically killing men, women, and children by bayoneting them to death instead of shooting, as he aimed to conserve bullets. These brutal massacres became a recurring pattern, staining his path wherever he ventured. The gravity of his actions was so severe that news of his atrocities reached the French government in Paris. Even his own soldiers were appalled by the extreme violence, leading some to abandon. Once Paris was informed, orders were issued to arrest Voulet and Chenoin. A French officer was dispatched from Mali to trail the expedition and apprehend them. However, what he encountered was profoundly horrifying. In one village, around a thousand lifeless bodies lay exposed, with the bodies of young girls hanging from trees, all of which instilled a terror of the French flag among the local populace. Fortunately, Chanoin ultimately proved futile, as both met their demise at the hands of their own soldiers. Nonetheless, the mission persisted. French troops traversed the Sahara and secured the region, culminating in the realization of their African project. This vision materialized as a federation comprising eight territories, Mauritania, Senegal, Mali, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, Benin, and Niger. The seat of power was established in Dakar, encompassing the entire expanse under the umbrella term, French West Africa. The methodology employed to govern this vast territory mirrored the methods used to capture it, brute force. In the initial decades after the conquest, France faced uprisings, such as the Tuareg Rebellion of 1916, involving an ethnic group residing in the Saharan regions, including the northern reaches of Nigeria. When the Tuaregs rebelled, France responded with overwhelming force, resorting to summary executions as a norm. It was through these suppressive measures that France maintained control over its colonies. Many of these colonies fought on behalf of France during the First World War, with approximately two and a half million Africans involved, followed by another million during the Second World War. However, these individuals were not regarded as French citizens, they were classified as French subjects. Diori's stance prevailed, he sought greater autonomy within France rather than immediate independence. In 1958, approximately 72% of Niger's citizens voted in favor of the constitution, resulting in Diori becoming the new president. However, despite this outcome, dissent gradually burgeoned, particularly in the northern desert regions. In 1960, France yielded to pressure, conceding to grant Niger its independence. Diori was once again elected as the president. Subsequently, he wielded power with an autocratic approach, eliminating rival parties, imposing bans, and ruling with an iron grip. Even though Niger was seemingly independent, France still had a hold on the country. Termed as Francafrique, a sphere of French influence emerged in West Africa, characterized by undue interference. Originating from the vision of former French President Charles de Gaulle, it involved cultivating personal networks and supporting leaders, even those with dictatorial tendencies. In fact, more than a thousand French companies operated in West Africa, positioning France as the third largest investor in the region, following the United States and the United Kingdom. Additionally, France deployed a substantial number of troops in West Africa, notably in Niger, with a purported mission to counteract terrorist groups. However, this military presence raised concerns about sovereignty. 
Despite promises from French presidents to dilute the influence of Francophrique, actions often contradicted these assurances. One key piece of evidence is the continuity of the CFA franc, a shared currency utilized by 14 African countries. Established in 1945, before African independence, these countries deposit a significant portion of their reserves with the French Treasury in exchange for the use of the CFA franc. Its value is pegged to the euro. France argues that this currency stabilizes West Africa, but it also carries a weight of historical trauma, reminiscent of colonial exploitation. Often referred to as monetary servitude, the CFA franc stands as a stark reminder of the colonial past, contributing to the resentment many Nigerians hold toward France. This resentment stems from a history of plunder, violence, imposition of currency, and a refusal to depart from the region. Differing from typical colonial rulers, France maintained its influence over its former colonies even after they gained independence. This has resulted in the exploitation of resources and has left populations grappling with the severe impacts of poverty. Many individuals have raised the question of whether a coup is an essential measure to expel French presence from their nations. While some argue that coups are inherently detrimental and should never serve as a means of effecting change within a country, others hold the belief that removing those in power who align with French interests might be the only way to extricate France's influence. Given this situation, there's a dilemma. How can these nations engage in democratic processes? To free themselves from France's influence when the same influence might manipulate the political landscape? Are military interventions the only way to go? What did you think of our video? Please share your thoughts on our video in the comment section below. If you found it enjoyable, we encourage you to spread the word to your friends and give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it with your social circle on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter as well.